Okay, I'm on my second tank of glyphosate. I got one, two, three, and just a little bit of a row sprayed. I'm gonna go along and kind of show you what I am spraying and how I spray it. This shouldn't take very long, and then we'll get on to the bug killing. In the last video, I said that when I'm doing my hedging, I want to be able to see from the middle of the row all the way across to the other side, to the grass on the other side. And that's because that makes this a lot easier. Unfortunately, this row, the catch wire is drooping a little bit and I forgot to bring the stuff to tighten it up. But that catch wire should be a little bit higher than this. It should be a lot easier to see through there but you can get the gist of it. So what I'm doing is trying to straighten out the edges a little bit. The bluegrass will encroach into the row a bit. And I try to hit all the weeds on the side without making a big bump into the grass. There is dramatically less weeds in the middle of the vineyard right here than there was on the edge. It took about a gallon to do the first row and a gallon to do the next two rows after that. And this one would probably take less than a half a gallon. And if you haven't seen previous videos, it does not matter at all if you get this on the trunks. You just don't want to get it on anything green. It becomes basically neutral upon hitting the ground, but anything that goes on green will give that plant kind of like cancer. It makes them grow really fast and that's what kills them. Now, got another plane coming. We have the EPA fly-in. I misspoke, it's not EPA, it's EAA, Experimental Aircraft Association. They have a fly-in on the other side of the state and apparently we're right on the flight path because we've been getting a ton of small aircraft right over our house and that is not usual. The EAA used to be located kind of in the middle of the town in Hales Corners, which was just down the road from my grandpa's house. So we went there a few times when I was younger. Then they moved to Oshkosh. I believe it's in Oshkosh, but they have an airfield up there. They didn't have an airfield where they were before that. Okay, these ends ends of the rows are always just full of purslane. I should probably ID the weeds. Well, we have bluegrass, which is not really a weed, but it's a weed if it's in the wrong place. We have purslane, which is, it's this right here. It's a succulent and it's really hard to kill. And once you do kill it, it comes right back. We have lamb's quarters, red root pigweed, I'm trying to think of all the rest of them. Bunch of different kinds of grasses, barnyard grass, foxtail. Oh, what the heck are the other ones? There's a few different kinds of weed grasses. I'll let you know when we run into red root pigweed. That's always a real nasty weed, and there used to be a lot of it in the vineyard here, but kind of killed that back and haven't seen very much of it in the last few years. But that can have close to a million seeds per plant, and if you let it go, it's real hard to get rid of because of so many seeds. That's red root pigweed right there. Do not let that infest your vineyard. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of weeds in here now, but if you don't stop them, 
they're going to go to seed and you're going to have a big problem next year. Oh yeah, crabgrass is another one. But there's lots of weedy grasses. And we are basically on the last row. There's another row after this, but it doesn't shade this row. This is technically the last row. So there's quite a bit more weeds on the end rows because they get more sun. And you can see that the weeds are mostly on the other side, the sunny side. And then after that, that very last row, which is basically a starter row, it only has a couple plants in it and doesn't have a wire yet, that row is just solid weeds. So that one may take a whole tank to get rid of it, but it is what it is. Whatever it takes, we'll get rid of them. You can see this area right here where a vine was missing, how much more weeds there is here. And you can also see why I hand weeded around the vine. When I came through here yesterday, I hand weeded around the vine and that's so I can spray right up to it and not have to stop. Another open area with a new vine and tons of weeds. I spray the very edge of the row too because there's always a weed grass growing there or another weed. And again, I hand weeded around that vine earlier so that I won't have to bend down and do that right now while I'm trying to spray. I am right by this bird nest, so she's a little upset with me again. I've mentioned this in other videos, but this area right here still has a lot of tillage radish that just keep coming up every year. I planted tillage radish in the entire vineyard the first couple years to fix the soil. I gotta do a video on that sometime to show how that's done and show why it works. This soil is really nice now and it used to be just solid, really hard clay. This is tillage radish right here. What the tillage radish does, it can get Oh, like six or eight inches around. I have it in some of the early videos. It can get huge around and it'll grow like six feet deep. So when it dies, well, for one thing, it soaks up a bunch of nitrogen. So you can fertilize with nitrogen towards the end of the year and the tillage radish will suck all that up and then release it way down deep for next year. But another thing that it does is punch big holes down into the clay and those holes fill up with organic matter and basically what it does is make real nice soil nice and deep. I got bugs flying on my face and a robin bitching me out. And a sun that is baking me. This is quite unpleasant. I still have that beast to go, but it's not that bad. I'm nearly done. And then we got that one last spray to kill the bugs and we're complete and we're out of here for the day. Got a lot of crab grass in this area mixed with the purslane. I know, I know. This robin is really pissed at me. That should not be here. A vine going down near the ground. You do not want to be spraying those. 
And I remember seeing that yesterday and thinking, I'm going to have to get that cut before I spray tomorrow. And I just never did it. What I'm spraying right now, the edges of this big clump of crabgrass, that will hopefully kill the entire crabgrass plant and not do anything to the bluegrass right next to it. That's what usually happens. All right, here's more pigweed. Red root pigweed. I'm coming up the back side of the very last row, which, like I said before, is technically not even a row, but it certainly has more weeds than anywhere else in the vineyard. That's because this was let go for a couple years and it got a ton of seeds in it. Can't let that happen again. I'm not sure if I said that in this video yet, but eventually I would like to just grow bluegrass in the rows like this and cut it with a robotic mower. Cut the entire vineyard with that robotic mower. That would save a huge amount of time and it would eliminate a good deal of chemicals. But unfortunately, the robotic mowers, anything decent, is really expensive right now. And from what I've seen, they're not super reliable. Maybe there's a good one out there. If you know anything about robotic mowers, make sure you comment below and let me know which brand is capable of doing something like this. It would need to be able to go out on its own and get around all the vines. I don't know if any of them are capable of doing that right now, but at some point I can see that happening. Going right around our little vines with the greatest of ease. Yeah, there is a ton of weeds in this row. Taking a lot longer than the other rows. This row is probably taking as much time as all the other rows combined. Shouldn't be that bad after this time, but you can see that there was a ton of foxtail and purslane seed in there. I've been working at this steady now for five hours, a little over five hours, and as soon as I'm done with this roll, which isn't too much, I'm gonna go take a quick break and cool down and get hydrated and eat. Then I'll come back and I'll do the spray of seven and then we will be done with our triple spray day. Hopefully the Japanese beetles have resettled down and have presented themselves for a real nice spray. Okay, coming up on the end here. And that is it. And I have almost exactly one gallon left and I have plenty of places for that. Got a Japanese beetle right there. Hopefully he's there in a couple minutes when I come back to kill him. All right, that's two sprays down, one to go. Go get a little bit of lunch and I will be right back. Okay, it has been quite the long day. I'm ready to do the third spray, which is seven mixed with both of the fungicides that I sprayed earlier. And like I said before, I'm just going to spot spray this along the top in areas that the Japanese beetles are congregating. For the most part, I'm just going to spray the beetles themselves. Okay, let's get this finished. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not, but the first row had hundreds of beetles. Oh yeah, definitely less beetles in the second row because I took off a lot more of the material. But like right there, there was just maybe eight or 10 of them. I'm 
I'm walking pretty fast. I want to get the tops of the vines sprayed because that's where they hang out the most. And then wherever I see the actual beetles, I'll give them a spray. But they'll probably be killed whether I spray them directly or not. And this spray will last for several days killing beetles. By the time I'm done, I'll come back through here on the first and second rows and show you the dead beetles. And this stuff, you can spray this up until a week before harvest. I won't be doing that, but it's pretty safe stuff. It's been used forever. Yeah, there was definitely a lot more beetles in the first row, but hopefully it's showing up. You can see them taking off and landing and stuff. How many are in that spot? One, two, three, there's like 10 of them clustered together. I can see all kinds of these Japanese beetles flying around. They're like leaving the vine as I come. But after I'm done, oh, maybe an hour later, you won't see any of them flying around anywhere. And you'll see bunches of little carcasses in the cupped leaves. And again, this also has fungicide in the spray. So I'm spraying the tops of these vines really well with fungicide at the same time. Big pile of them there. Big old mass of them there. These are all Japanese beetles who are not gonna make it until next year. Not gonna reproduce and flood the place with thousands of Japanese beetles again next year. A lot of them move down here from me spraying the other vines. They keep getting pushed this way. Now they're going to disperse back to the other vines and die there or just die here. But for the most part, all of the Japanese beetles that are here right now are going to die. Look at how bad they shred these vines. And if you leave them alone, they can completely decimate your entire vineyard, at least in our area. Look at all these, a whole cluster of them right there. Wow. 
sleeve full of them. God, I hate these things. Hate them with a passion. bird nest right here. We're going to go around that. This wouldn't harm them anyways. You use this stuff on live chickens to get rid of mites. So not really that bad of stuff unless you're a bug. Looks like I'm going to have just enough to get these vines in the new row done as well. There's already a few of these Japanese beetles that came from the main vineyard over onto these and are dead. Just want to see a little bit more of that. Ooh, bunch of them right there. They would have completely destroyed every leaf on that shoot right there within a day. You can see one on his back right there. Another one that came in from somewhere else, not feeling so well. Okay, that's gonna do it. Okay, that's it, third spray of the day. We'll probably see some live beetles, but there's gonna be a whole bunch of dead ones as well. There's a dead one right there. Any live ones we see will likely be dead before the end of the day. All they got to do is leave where they're at and go to a place where I sprayed and they're going to die as well. Another dead one. Another dead one. Good, good, good. Earlier today, I could see beetles flying all over the place and now I don't see anything. There's a live one. Not for too long though. We'll stir him up and let him fly somewhere else where he's going to die. Yeah, seen a few live ones. Two dead ones. All right, we're gonna walk back up this middle aisle and then call it a day. Yeah, look at all the damage them things do. If these vines weren't hedged, they would just look like spaghetti. Just total shreds. Well, so far not seeing any dead ones, but I'm only looking for the ones that are caught in the leaves. Most of them drop to the ground. There's a dead one right there.
when I was doing that hedging last time, the whole ground was just full of dead beetles. Yep, pretty much nothing flying around. All right. Oh, there's a dead one right there. Oh, and one right there. A few dead ones, but the good news is no live ones in this row. All right, that's going to wrap the day up. So, as I've been saying, the next video is fertilization, and that'll be tomorrow. We'll take a nice slow walk out of here and admire the day's progress. Three sprays in one day. Killed all kinds of stuff, but saved the vines in the process. Within a day or two, all these weeds are going to start shriveling up. And in about a week, this is going to look really nice and clean again. Okay, so if you want to see that fertilization video, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.